<laughs> but needless to say, she, in that very short time, she has accomplished quite a bit. And actually, a, you know, all seriousness aside, I, um, I did uh, connect with you because of this very technique that we're going to do here. And I've experienced it myself a couple of times. So I don't know you really well, but I know that you do really good work. I mean, I've had it done on me and I've seen other people. And um, the, the, the connection for me was that, you know, um, acupuncture in America is usually done one-on-one uh, -on -one, and it's 80 by 90, something like that per session. And in China, it's more of done in a clinic kind of a setting. It's the first line of defense for most types of uh, I hope I'm not stealing your thunder, by the way. Oh, okay. It's the first line of defense for a lot of, um, you know, easily treated disease. And that would be the common ailments or the lifestyle kind of things that we would treat. Would you just go to a doctor for the sniffles? And the first thing they do is give you acupuncture. And in that kind of a setting, it's more of a clinical and it's, uh, uh, not clinical, but um, a sort group setting. Community, yeah. yeah, community is what I'm looking for. Um, and so certain parts of the body you know, you don't have to disrobe entirely and all that sort of thing to do it in, in a group setting. And what I really liked about this particular um, protocol, which I, you can tell us more about, is that it's specifically for detoxing and de-stressing. And uh, I feel so blessed that you're going to, to give this, uh, for she does charge for this uh, most places. And then in a, in a community setting, in the group settings, what you've done, it's like a $25 charge for commandment. And then you have the fireplace set up. <laughs> and you get the fireplace out. Yeah. <laughs> well, usually with, with group events or when I go out to places, um, we'll do the urban healer. But I do sometimes have community clinics, which are regular acupuncture. Oh, okay. Um, that I do include a lot of ear points, too, just sure. as part of the session. But then you can work like elbows down and knees down. Yeah, you should tell them the command points. They go elbows to finger, you know, here, here, and so, again, you know, people are in recliners or seated, and you still don't have to. Yeah. You know, drapes and robes and things for everybody. And, and the, most of the strongest points in the body are the distal points. Um, so those are the key. Well, I guess what, you know, what we're going to do is they're very experiential um, and you're going to explain a lot of things. You're going to talk for a little bit and then let us experience it. And then yeah. I really encourage you to uh, ask questions and um, report on how you feel after you get your ears pierced. <laughs> so I um, really want to thank you and Dr. Chandra for having me today. Um, I've heard great things about Seclair and I've really been looking forward to this experience and, and it was really great um, to meet Sven and he's really connected me with a lot of wonderful people in the health community. Um, I'm a newer practitioner just getting started. I, I opened my office um, just this past March in uh, Bloomfield right across from Children's Hospital. So. I, I uh, went to school in Florida for Acupuncture Academy for Five Element, which was in Gainesville, um, and finished my clinical rotation last August. So, um, but I'm originally from Pittsburgh, so it's nice to be back. Although I wish I could have brought more of the warm weather with me. <clears throat> but today I'm going to talk about um, auricular acupuncture. So, acupuncture is kind of endless. There's so many styles. There's so many approaches. It's thousands of years old. So obviously you would have had you know, different schools of thought, a lot of time to experiment, um, a lot of time to have different fads even, maybe belief systems. You had the earth school versus the water school, for instance. Um, but auricular acupuncture in, in this form is pretty modern. Um, there has been points that were listed in the, in the Chinese classics for thousands of years, but it was actually a Frenchman in the 50s who brought us more of the, the modern usage of auricular acupuncture. So most of you have probably heard about foot reflexology. So they, they can map the entire body onto the foot. You know, you got a digestive issue, they might squeeze on your second toe, things like that. Um, acupuncture works the same way. The um, ha hand acupuncture is popular in Korea. So they sort of map the whole body onto the hand. Um, you can do the same thing with the ear, foot, you can map the head onto a limb, you know, it's sort of your possibilities are endless. You can blow it up. If you really want to you know, work on a large area, you can shrink it down and just little micro points on a finger to represent maybe the head, for instance. So um, there's um, a lot of approaches. Today, um, I'm going to do a 10 needle protocol, five of each year. And if you want the extra bonus, um, 
the third eye, or it's called Yintong point. That's the I told the studies for the icing on the cake. That's the bonus <laughs> point, and it adds the extra relaxation. But this protocol, um, I use the four ounce right now, is called the Nada protocol. And this stands for National Acupuncture Detox Association. So this came about in um, 1974. And this group um, wanted to help people that were had addictions and, and help them, support them through the detox process. So when we see detox, it's kind of a buzzword these days in alternative medicine. You know, they have the ionic foot baths and you know, everything is a toxin and it's a little different. Detox, as you know, you might work with people here that are um, coming off alcohol, drugs, you know, different, um, I'm trying to think of the word, substances um, that they might have had an issue with. So when we talk about detox and acupuncture, we're talking about supporting the organ systems and the emotional aspect of the organ related to those systems. So the NADA protocol, here's the ear. We have five needles, um, and they each represent sort of the five main yin organs. So that would be your heart, your lung, your liver, your kidney, and just the whole nervous system. And because everything is related. It's not just the physical heart, the physical kidney. We also deal with the spirit, the emotional aspect of the heart and the kidney, which in Chinese medicine, the heart is about, you know, normally just how we think about it, warmth, openness, communication. That's when it's in balance. But when the heart is imbalanced, when it's been injured, you might feel anxiety, maybe some mania, um, you know, severe kind of jittery kind of feelings. Um, the lung deals with inspiration, clarity, vision, beauty. When it's imbalanced, it becomes sad. There's grief and things about longing and loss. The liver, it's more like living. <laughs> liver, <laughs> my writing is not too good. Living a good life. Living a good life, the liver. If your liver is living a good life. You feel laid back, relaxed. Your chi is flowing smoothly. Okay, but we're our modern times. I think it's just an American thing. We're all living under stress, um, on the go. So this leads to stress, frustration, and anger. So if the liver gets bound up, if it gets stressed out. The kidney, um, when it's in balance, it relates to will and power and potential and motivation. These are all wonderful things. But when it gets in balance, it can be exhausted, exhaustion, and fear is the big problem with the kidney. So fear could be of the unknown. It could be of, um, you know, just being frozen and unable to move on. So in the 70s, the, the group that came up with this particular protocol, and this, um, I forgot to mention here, this just gets you from fight or flight into the rest of the digestive group. Okay. So they came up with something that would sort of be a nice catch-all for as many people as possible. You know, what is what are the basic patterns, what are the basic stresses, what are the basic emotions people have when they're under severe stress or when they're in a situation where they have to um, come off of a substance that might be masking some of these issues. So these are the points that are involved with this. Um, and they also touch on the other style of acupuncture that I went to school for, which is called the five elements. And this discusses basically how we as humans um, associate with each season. Each element is related to a season right now. For instance, we're in autumn, we're in fall. It's the metal element. 
Um, metal, like I said, was the lung. It's associated with grief, sadness, loss, letting go. If you think about the energy, the way you might feel around this time of year, you know, the summer's kind of carefree, it's warm, it's bouncy, and you get sort of this, the energy feels low. You get maybe a little tired, maybe a little anxious, a little run down, because you know the winter's coming, unless you're one of those winter ski people, you know, who loves the cold. Most people don't like the cold so much. They feel that energy going inward, which can be a nice thing because we're supposed to store the energy for the winter. We're supposed to sort of go into that inward place. But a lot of people feel a little frantic. So when we do this, it also balances that, right? It brings you into the, the virtues of the season, which would be the crispness of the air, the clarity of the, the air. So you can let go of things properly. So we should actually do fall cleaning instead of spring cleaning. Okay, this is the time of year where we should be letting go. Um, so who is it used for? Um, this protocol can be used in a setting like this just for general relaxation. It's just wonderful for most people, you know, right away, everyone sort of just, oh, okay. You're like, I feel so relaxed. Yeah, it's possible you forgot how relaxed you can you can actually be. Um, but it's wonderful. They use this often for our veterans, soldiers, people with PTSD. And this is another main use. So the two main uses you see in clinical settings or you know people in the hospital VA working will do this for the veterans with PTSD and people with maybe substance issues or people that are coming off of substances. So that's basically in a nutshell how this works. I'm not sure if that was too much or not. Everyone's kind of, it's early for me. <laughs> I can anybody... tell she used to be a teacher. She still is a teacher too. Yeah. So I like, I could go on all day, but I just want to make sure that we're um, on the same page. Does anybody have any questions so far <clears throat> about this or the points or acupuncture? Well, I think it's very exciting. Uh, I think it's very exciting. We do have a lot of trauma-related you know, challenges mm -hmm. that people experience, and also a lot of addictions. Okay. And addictions are often secondary to traumas. Mm -hmm. uh, very few are just primary addictions. Mm -hmm. It's always something that a person is trying to mitigate by yeah. using using a substance. Um, so when we use detox term, we use that for getting off of a chemical <clears throat> uh, very often. But this whole acupuncture and the meridians and this whole science has always been very intriguing. Uh, so it was very helpful for, to have that thought process and the structure of what goes into uh, you know, the protocol. Yeah, it's usually, you know, most, like you said, most disease comes from <laughs> spirit or emotion. Um, imbalance, trauma, and these sort of represent all of the main emotions that lead to these different patterns. He, I think you have yeah, um, I, I do yoga, and I actually had some oh. training to work with PTSD through yoga. Awesome. And under underlying that, I think, is, is this sense that uh, in yoga, it's the idea is the energy gets blocked within the system, mm -hmm. and somehow we need to be able to release uh, that block. Yeah. And I was wondering I, I, exactly how this might. It's, uh, it's the same kind of premise yeah. with acupuncture. Yeah. Acupuncturists will generally feel your pulses as well mm -hmm. when they meet you mm -hmm. and look at your tongue. Mm -hmm. And that can show the tongue is kind of like the long term picture. Okay. So, based on the color, the cracks, uh, the coating, mm -hmm. things like mm -hmm. that, they can see maybe your digestion is a little sluggish. Maybe you have some inflammation, which we call heat. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the pulses can show you the more local, uh, real-time picture, okay. and you can actually feel some of these blocks between okay. meridians and things okay. like that. So it's the okay. same kind of thing you want to push it. I call it, affectionately, the rotor-rooter treatment. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, or, or, the, or the leaf gutter clog kind of thing. You just want to push it through, and you feel the changes instantly on the pulse. So it's, it is the sort of the same premise that you can undo those blocks sort of, you know, with the breathing and the yeah. acting. Sure. So, yeah. you, you mentioned that the distal <laughs> points along here, and, uh, from I guess the knees down to the feet, um, and the ears. Is, are those 
areas where what meridians are closest to the surface or not necessarily the... it's just that I don't, why would they be more effective i'm not sure necessarily why they're more effective i think maybe maybe because there are six yin and you know there's six yin six yang and they all mm -hmm. do run through so maybe they are just closer together okay. but i'm not sure why that would be okay. but um that's a good that's something i'll have to invest i never really okay. thought about it i, I mean there's a yeah. lot of points on the chest sure. and and, sure. and the head that we use yeah. the face but classically these maybe because they each the points that we consider to be the elemental points okay the source points which tap into the, we call them the original source mm -hmm. um junction points which vent between um interior exterior and between the yin and yang okay. meridians maybe because of those they have longer okay. effect the other okay. ones seem to have like um i call it like the creeper effect you'll feel a, ge a gentler mm -hmm. I don't know. I, 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 I think yeah. it makes in food terms. I call yeah. these spicy points, and these are more like vanilla icing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. That's what it feels like. So it's like, oh. yeah. It's more like a food. You know? But I think probably because of the elemental and, and the specialized points. And some of the, the meridian rotor rooter points are also located right okay. here. It's called a sheath left, and that really pushes everything okay. through a meridian. So that's probably. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Did you have a question? Yeah. How, how often, like, you suggest like doing this like for people that come in with different issues is it like i think in some clinics they do maybe twice a week once a week um you can never really do too much acupuncture you can yeah, do it yeah <laughs> so what i'm trying and what i'm sort of advocating now is i'm not really sure how we got started as acupuncturists on this once a week regimen because if you go to you know a new patient as a chiropractor they'll say you need to come twice a week three times a week for three weeks and then you have the problem under control. Um, acupuncture works the same way, it kind of builds. So I'm, I'm getting into the thing of sort of prescribing a course of acupuncture and I'm seeing much faster results and longer lasting results. So, um, but most people traditionally do once a week and that works fine too. And you can get great results with that. I just think in the beginning, if you come twice a week instead, but, and you're in, that's really good for pain stuff too. You know, like I, I do that more with pain stuff, with the motion stuff, once a week tends to work wonderfully. And if somebody's really in a state of anxiety or something, if they call and say, you know, I'm feeling it again, we might need to up the amount. It just depends on the person. It's so, it's so variable. Um, so how do you do your diagnostic? How do you even know what this person, what's the problem? The other, do you feel that they're talking and yeah. knowing to that word? Yeah, there's, well, in the five, and this is where you get into all these different styles and tradition. So in the five element tradition, there's basically four legs to the school we say, which is color, sound, odor, emotion. It's very simple. You look at the colorations that appear um, when someone speaks. So if you, you look for inappropriate emotional responses, essentially. So if somebody and giggles nervously when they're talking about their dog that died, that would be... Um, inappropriate joy you know or anxiety mm -hmm. if somebody uh, mentions they didn't grieve and they turn white you know these all have colors associated with them too it sounds a little weird i know but um you also look for the imbalanced emotion the colors how the person talks you can hear a lot from their voice if someone um you all know garrison healer from mm -hmm. family home <laughs> um prairie home companion he sort of has that weepy voice you know that's a classic metal imbalance mm. um who would be um president obama he kind of talks like chop short clip okay we're gonna do this but that's wood okay so he's a wood person and you can actually hear it in someone's voice and that helps you diagnose as well now with um traditional chinese medicine which is the more common style you usually um base it on um, symptom patterns the tongue the pulse and then also what the patient is telling you, what they're complaining about. Um, and that, that's usually how you come up with a diagnosis. Okay. So then if you have made a diagnosis and you have implemented a protocol of treatment, how can a person continue to stay well after the treatment ends? You, you mean just that one treatment or like a course? So let's assume that you have done eight treatments or is, is so whatever the treatment protocol is, mm -hmm. Is the assumption that after the treatment is done, a person is going to be okay? Yeah, that's sustainable, okay? 
Yes and no, because it requires the patient to be, and this is important, I'm sure some of you here are running into this too, you need the patient to be on board. A lot of people want to be passive and say, fix me, you know, but they have to do the work. They have to want to get better. They have to be willing to face some of these emotional things. And the great thing about acupuncture, what I've noticed is people that are kind of stuck, within a few treatments, you start to see these positive changes. A lot of it, un like we talk about blocks, there's a block. There's some reason why they just can't make the change. Once you get the energy moving, they feel better. They want to start eating better. They, they want to start um, exercising. They want to start dealing with whatever issues. So you sort of naturally see it unfold and it happens organically a lot. Now, something that's been going on a long time might take months, years, especially if you're dealing with just emotional type issues, but you do usually see big changes within a month or so, you know, three or four treatments, people saying, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm quitting the job. Um, you know what, I'm going to get out of this situation or whatever relationship or, you know, whatever their issue is. And you see quick change. Um, if it's a chronic physical ailment that say they've had back pain for 25 years, might take a little longer. Um, if they've been in denial about an issue, if they've been, you know, drinking for 30 years, it's a little hard. They have to have some desire in there. Otherwise, you're just sort of maintaining, or you're making them feel good for that week, and then they're just continuing to squander that energy. And um, it's almost like you, you, you're giving them the boost, but they're not using it properly. So it, it, again, it depends. Yeah. So uh, physically, um, what is your goal with the needle to acquire a needle to use an acupuncture as opposed to maybe just pressure along the meridians? That works too. I, I, I find that though the needle going in there, there's a, a change and they've, they've looked at this with the electron microscope in the connective tissue. When you're actually in the point, when you hit the point properly, the connective tissue wraps around that needle and it pulls it in. And there's something that happens there. And they're still not sure 100% why acupuncture works or how what the exact mechanism is for it. They're starting to think now there's a network in the connective tissue that sends all these signals. And there's just something about that. When you put it in the wrong point, it doesn't necessarily do that. And I can feel it if I get the point. I feel this little tug. And you'll feel a little cheese sensation, which might be like a little frog or an electric zap. Um, if I don't get it, really, it just feels like you're going through butter and you're not in that particular point. So there's something about these areas that is actually responding. Um, and I just feel that, that stimulation gives you the extra layer than just sitting there pushing it. But because, you know, it's hard to sit there and push for a certain point for 20 minutes, you know. Um, so your main goal is to get into just connective tissue? I always thought maybe you're- It does go deep. I, or no, you're not, have, if you hit a nerve, that does not feel. Most people think you. And even acupuncturists will explain it this way. We'll say, you know, it has to do with we're, we're stimulating the nervous system, which we are, but we don't want to actually hit nerves. Yeah. And if you hit a nerve, it is a zinger. That's and, what I yeah. And and it hurts for maybe a week. You know. <laughs> so we try to avoid hitting them. Um, but it does kind of have a nervous system react. I mean, uh, all of the reactions are in the nervous system. So. It, it is still really unknown. Um, there are a few theories, sort of the Western science, about um, you know hormones are released, it stimulates hormone release, it stimulates um, white blood cells to be in blood to move to an injured area. It might be too with sometimes a micro trauma. Something's happening here, so it's saying, hey, there's something foreign here. Let's send some blood. Let's send some helpers to an injured area. But that doesn't always answer because I'm not always going to put needles into your shoulder if it's hurt. I'm going to probably put needles in your ankle to treat your shoulder. So then it gets even more mysterious. <laughs> and, and a lot of people will say, Pay no attention to that. Yes, you know, why the heck are you putting, let's say, an easy one would be if you have knee pain, I'm probably going to put it through your elbow here. Why? The best way this was explained to me. And it deals with deep connective pathways. You have the meridians, the lines, and that's the surface, but they do connect to each other deep in the organs and deep where you can't reach them with the needle. So that's how I can affect here with here. But I have to know the meridians here where your pain is 
and which meridians run through here that will mirror it and balance it. So it, again, we get to that little microcosm. Here's the foot and I'm treating the whole body. Here's the ear. I'm, I'm in, you know, drawing the human being wrapped around the ear and this, this one. so it's kind of like that. I really enjoyed having it explained to me by a teacher of the balance method, which this is, it's another style. Um, say the lights right there, that's your knee pain. Okay, so look at the lights. All right, where's the switch? Find the switch. Okay, so you're gonna start looking around here. So it's kind of like that. I know where the switches are that are gonna affect this particular area, but they're not gonna be in the same area. That would be bad engineering if they put the light switch right next to the light on the ceiling. So it, it's kind of a way to think about it. And if you think about all the classical points on the body, basically all those little dots along the meridians, it's like a GPS map saying, okay, you are here. And if you turn here, it's gonna connect the, the, the road's going to take you down to the foot. It, it's kind of like that. And it's, it's, it gets crazy. I mean, then you have to get into the yin, the yang. You have to get into these ancient Chinese bagua patterns and the stomach balance is this and why. Um, but it does, I assure you, make sense. <laughs> it just takes a while to, you know, you have to wrap your head around the... Can you condense, you know, 4,000 years of education into 30 minutes more? Exactly, yeah. So it, it really is, is tricky to... Um, explain it, you know, in a short amount of time. But basically, I, I like that way. Most people seem sad. Okay, there's switches that turn on the knee, turn off the knee, and shoulder, whatever. But when it gets to the emotional stuff, um, it's a little different. You wouldn't treat so much like that. You treat more um, the elemental spirit aspect of the points. So again, I'm blending three or four different things depending on the situation of the patient. There's a lot involved <laughs> and, and you, you can never learn all of it. It's just endless. I mean, I can study my whole life and know a fraction of what's out there and, and acupuncture. So when you are looking for a point, you will know anatomically this is where it should be. Mm -hmm. And you said that, you know, when you actually are either hitting or not, you, you can tell by, okay, you then you approximate your thing if you feel that you're not at the right spot. Sometimes I, I might, you know, adjust it a little bit or pull out the needle just a little and angle it just to hit it a little better. Sometimes you can't feel it. It really depends on the person, too. Some people are real um, tendony, sinewy, and for them, it's it's a little, it feels a little different than someone who doesn't have as many fit tendons and stuff. Um, but yeah, generally you feel that. But you can also think of it, like I said, the, the points, the big points are the GPS main points, but anywhere along that road between this point and this point, there's an infinite number of points because they're all on the meridian. So even if I'm not perfectly in the dead center of that point, I'm still affecting that point. Yeah. But it does feel very unique when you really get the bullseye. And you feel the body pulling in. And sometimes I even feel that, it sounds strange, but through the metal of the needle, I can feel it in the handle. I can feel the kind of tingling feeling that you might feel. I'm like, oh, got it. And that just takes a while just energetically to hone into that. Because um, at first as a student, you're like measuring everything. You're like, okay, this is the proximal failing. So, and then you're like, okay, it's somewhere here and you're drawing dots. But as you get practice, you start to just, it feels like a little sponge, it feels a little squishier than other parts. And like, there it is. So that's how that works. <laughs> um, any other questions? And otherwise we can um, get started with anybody that's interested in trying. Me too. Yeah? yeah. I, I hate needles, and that's why I want to try. Okay. <laughs> well, I will be as gentle as possible. I'm not going to lie. And I think that's very natural. Most people, um, you know, say, well, I, I, I've heard acupuncture can really help. It helped my sister in law with her back pain, you know, but I just I hate needles. And I'm like, good, because that's a natural reaction. If you, you know, if you didn't, you'd probably be the guy at the circus, you know, with. Putting, you know, all the tattoos there. So I think it's a normal human reaction to be a little anxious about something, being stuck, and you the sharp. So I assure you that it's not 100%, you know, it's not going to be that bad. In the discomfort, it might just be a little bing, and and that's it. Generally, the needle isn't even what you feel, it's the chi. It's the point itself. It feels like if you squeeze this, if you all squeeze this little point on your hand pretty hard, Feels like you feel the pressure point, right? You kind of feel that tugging, that throbbing. That's more what it feels like. If I hear, 
So the ears, they could be a little sensitive. And, and if a point feels a little more sore than another point on you, it's probably because we needed to address that particular organ or that organ. So there might have been a little block there. So sometimes if it's a little tender, say, oh. And if people, you know, their lung point hurts, they say, you have allergies, you have something on the lung, you say, yeah. And usually it's the liver point people want to punch you, so I just don't say Because again, why? That's the one where all your stress is released, you go, oh, and then you're done. So I assure you, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful, very relaxing. So any apprehension about needles, you know, the benefits far outweigh. So you're the, saying most people survive. I'm going to do a, I have to do a story behind my story. So my youngest son, he was maybe, I, I don't know how old he was, very young. And we were, I was doing flu shots for them at home. Oh, okay. So I used to bring in flu shots and give it to them myself. And so the younger one, you know, he, I knew he was very scared of needles. Uh, so I thought that uh, I'll have him work with me as a helper. Okay. So then why don't you help me, you know, get it to her and to your mom and, you know, your mom will give it to me. So I thought he would be desensitized about that. So we did, everybody, when it was his turn, he ran away. <laughs> <laughs> he's running everywhere in the house, you know, so we barely captured him. Okay. And he sits down in this, in this, in this sofa and he's, he's crying and crying and he goes, I'm going to act like a man. <laughs> <laughs> so act like a man. I'm going to act like a man. That's what I'm saying. the story is We're not going to have to chase you around the room, are we? You're running. Yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into the Zen zone. I guess we Sheets that say yes, I can give you a yes or I forgot. Oh. So I figure I will just explain the potential risks and just have you sign. If you're interested, just sign your name and write your email. Um, and that way. We'll still will sue you. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> if you die, I'll make sure to sue So so in the regular <laughs> So in the regular acupuncture, I'm gonna put sterile in there single one-time use for needles into five specific points on your ears. Um, I'll give you alcohol swabs to disinfect the area first. And um, the, you know, there might, sometimes you get a little bleeder when we pull it out, it's just a dot, I'll give you cotton balls, so there might be bleeding. Um, small risk of infection, that's why we use the alcohol just to clean out your ears. Um, Every once in a while, someone might feel a little woozy because we're moving a lot of energy. Um, worst case scenario, you pass out. Sometimes it's not so much that it hurts because people work themselves up, or some people, you know. So that is a potential. Those are the those are the potential side effects. Go from metal to air. <laughs> <laughs> so I just tell you that. So at, at any time during treatment, um, you know, you feel a little woozy, or you think it's, you just feel too much things moving around, just tell me and pull them out. But generally, I, I have only had that happen to one person who was very elderly and had just had surgery and didn't tell me. So they were pretty weak. So if if you know you're pretty strong, you've eaten, you've had some water this morning, you should be, you should be good to go. Thanks, but I just have to tell you that, um, <laughs> just that's what it is. So, now that you know, but like I said, never happened. 